My name is Terry Coberly. I was born in 1948 at Bates Memorial Hospital on South Main in Bentonville, Arkansas. My mother was a beautiful Phyllis LaVon Rendon. She was born in Sepulpa, Oklahoma in 1930. My father was Hugh Taylor Black. Uh, he was born in Peerage, Arkansas in 1925. He was the first Bentonville Marshal, which was an elected position, uh, in around 1950, I guess. He started out as a night patrolman in Bentonville, and it was, uh, it was a position that he walked around and checked the locks on the doors at night, and one of the things he had to do was turn the eggs on the hatchery on South Main in Bentonville, and uh, that paid part of his salary. Put them over in the hatchery <laughs> on South Main. Can you believe that? <laughs> and at the end of the shift, he could go in City Hall and take a nap. And his mother cooked at the Bates Hospital where I was born, and she would go knock on the door and say, honey, it's time to get up. Isn't that amazing? Years wow. ago, that's how small Bentonville was back then. It was wonderful. I've had the best of both worlds in Bentonville. It was a small little Mayberry town, uh, if you will, and um, my daddy ended up being elected sheriff. He was sheriff for three terms. We lived at the Benton County Jail, which I thought was a great adventure. We had uh, jail breaks, which I thought was wonderful. My poor little mother just hated it. She didn't want her children living in the jail, but I thought it was a great adventure. We uh, lived in an apartment, and uh, she had to cook for the prisoners, which she hated. <laughs> uh, we finally had a... Uh, uh, Daddy hired somebody to finally do the cooking. And, um, but we lived in an apartment there at the jail, and Daddy was elected three terms, and I was about mm -hmm. probably nine years old, I guess, when we lived there, nine through, I guess, maybe 12. And it was a great adventure. Um, we rode bicycles in the rain and played ball, and, and the Prisoners would watch us play ball and cheer for us and all kinds of stuff. It was a wonderful, wonderful childhood. But there was a trustee, trustee named uh, Sheepy Fields, and uh, it was kind of like Andy Griffith's show. You know, the trustee that was on the Andy Griffith show, and he would be locked up at night, and we had one. Uh, Sheepy Fields was like that. He was a trustee and he would uh, be let out during the day and come back in at night and uh, he would build things for us, a, a basketball goal, <laughs> all kinds of really innocent uh, a time for us back then. Um, but, you know, there were also uh, people who would you know, be awaiting trials for other more serious things, too. I can remember three times there were jailbreaks, and, uh, just like in the movies, and one time they knew, they were aware that there was going to be a jailbreak, uh, and they tied sheets together and, and all that, and the police were out there waiting for them. They tied sheets together, and sheets hit the uh, window, Oh, I thought it was great fun and exciting. My mother was not liking that kid, but we thought it was exciting and all that. And one time, uh, I remember there was a, there was a murder trial. Uh, of course, the jail was just off of the uh, square by the courthouse, and it was the uh, murder trial of Queenie Rand and Buddy Clark uh, uh, back in the 60s, and it was just huge. And, a lot of people came to town with sack lunches to watch the, you know, it was a big scandal and the murder had taken place in Rogers. And, um, uh, my parents had known um, 
the man who was murdered and uh, you know they knew the lawyers and, and, and all that and daddy was the sheriff who had to uh, investigate and arrest the lady and all of that and it was you know that all took place then it was just like in the movies it was really exciting and all that when he ran for sheriff, I would go with him knocking on doors to all the places in the county. And that was when poll tax, there was a poll tax. And we, you know, go on the dirt roads and see who was registered to vote and all of that. It was great fun. I went to school, uh, I started school at R.E. Baker School in uh, Bentonville, a little elementary school. And then, um, I went to Thomas Jefferson. My class was the first little class that went to, uh, I went to sixth grade there, and then I went to, uh, now they call it Old High Elementary, and I went seventh through twelfth grade there, and graduated from high school at uh, Old High Elementary, and, and graduated in 1966. Uh, I went to the University of Arkansas and um, majored in business the first year. I wanted to be a teacher. You know, back then in 1966, there uh, weren't a lot of opportunities for girls. You either were going to be a teacher, a nurse, uh, you know. And so I wanted to be a business teacher. So I was in the College of Business the first year. and. And then I got married, got married early and lived in Carlson Terrace and married at my high school boyfriend, way too young. <laughs> and uh, lived in Carlson Terrace my sophomore year. And then we, my husband went to work for Walmart and we moved around and he was an assistant manager for Walmart and then he, uh, went to the National Guard and that was back during the Vietnam War and all of that. We were married for eight years and divorced later. We had one son. I have one son, Lance Palmer. Now I have two granddaughters and one great granddaughter who's three. So yeah. So how did you what's the story on how you ended up in politics? <laughs> well <clears throat> I uh my current husband and I have been married for, let's see, we got married in 1975, and I went back to school and got my uh, bachelor's degree. I didn't get my bachelor's degree till 1975. <clears throat> and I went to work at uh, City Hall in the ut utilities department and worked there and went back to school and got my bachelor's degree and got my teaching degree in business like I originally had intended to do. And uh, when uh, my son was nine, I guess, the uh, city clerk uh, resigned and I, um, after I got my bachelor's degree, I got a job teaching school at Bentonville High School. And teachers always need a second income. And the city clerk had resigned. And I thought, well, you know, it was a part-time job at uh, the city. And I had been a, had worked in the utility department at the city, so I thought, well, I don't know how to do that. So I was appointed to, to fill the unexpired term of the city clerk. So I taught school full-time and did the city clerk job as a part-time position. So I was the city clerk for nine years. And the mayor at the time was Don O'Neill. And he got in trouble for running a water line to his house without uh, permission from the uh, city council. So he uh, was arrested and tried for that. And the first, 
court was a hung jury. And the next trial, they said, well, if you'll resign, we won't send you to jail. And I, <laughs> at that time, thought, oh my goodness, what is going to happen to my city? I was afraid there was going to be a building ban in Bentonville. And I thought, oh my God, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to have to do something. So I thought, I'm going to run for mayor. You know, we were having all kinds of sewer issues, wastewater issues. And I just thought, oh my God, <laughs> somebody's going to have to do something. So I guess it's going to have to be me. I had never thought about it, you know. I mean, I had been involved in politics all my life. After my senior year, I, the summer after my senior year, I had worked for Jim Trimble, who had uh, been the congressman here for 22 years. And I adored him. He was a wonderful man. <clears throat> and my daddy had been in politics forever. So I had been, I had worked in campaigns forever, but I had never considered running myself. But when I thought my city was about to be in trouble, I thought, somebody has to do something. So I thought, okay, I guess it's going to be me. And uh, the governor had appointed my uh, elementary school principal, John Fryer, to uh, fill out uh, Don O'Neill's uh, term. But John Fryer had said, I'm not, I, I don't want to run. So I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to. But then John Fryer decided, after I had already said I was going to, that he, he decided that he was going to do. Well, I had already committed, so I would have never, ever run against my principal, John Fryer. <laughs> but I had already said I was going to, so. It all happened, and there ended up being six people in the race. And that was 1994, and I ran and wanted it more than John Fryer. So, who were some of the people that came to you and encouraged you to run? And maybe nobody you encouraged me to run. <laughs> nobody encouraged me to run, and. Uh, you know, a lot of people encouraged me not to run and said, you need to wait. And, you know, John Fryer is great and he was the bank president and, you know, you're a woman and <laughs> nobody encouraged me to run. And, but I ran and I knocked on a lot of doors and I wanted it more. And <laughs> Do you think that you wanted it more is why you beat him? Uh, Did you campaign harder? I campaigned harder and yeah, wow. I campaigned harder. <laughs> I wanted it more and yeah. So once you got in there, what did you find about the job? Was it what you expected or were there things you didn't expect? Talk about that. What was it like when you got in there? Well, I had been city clerk for, you know, nine years. So I'd been at every meeting for nine years. So. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, plus I had been a utility clerk before that, so, um, you know, I, I loved the job, and I loved the challenge, and I loved my city. I loved it, you know? The biggest challenge that the city of Bentonville had when I was mayor was the infrastructure. And I was afraid that there was going to be a building ban in Bentonville. And uh, the state had uh, put a lot of um, conditions on uh, building in Bentonville because of the sewer issues that, that we had. What were the issues? Lack of capacity or uh, inadequate well, treatment or what? We ha we had a lot of uh, leak leaking in our uh, pipes all over all over town, 
so we had to replace a lot of pipes and um, so we had to start there money it was money and and all that so we had to replace pumping you know a lot of pumping stations and and all that so we just had to get money and replace pipes and what about your your streets and other infrastructure what, what projects did you work on there <laughs> Uh, well, in the 12 years that uh, I was mayor, we had to we had to do a lot of uh, master plans, and we had to look at a, a lot of fundamental start from the start from scratch, uh, bottom up, really <laughs> bottom up <laughs> from the sewer. Uh, you know, ground up, foundational, ground up. There were several projects you worked on uh, that when you were mayor. What are some of the ones that stand out maybe as the most important or some of the ones you're the most proud of? Uh, I thought uh, what, some of the stuff that I thought about most <clears throat> challenging. Uh, that I'm most proud of are are the uh, infrastructure things that that cities j that people really don't think think about. Uh, I mean, you know, citizens are happy as long as the light's green <laughs> and they can keep moving, and they don't really think about uh, flushing the toilet <laughs> as long as they they can turn the lights on and. The light's green when they get to the stoplight. That's what they're happiest about. But uh, they don't they don't think about a lot of the stuff that uh, that we took really had to take care of. But I'm most proud of uh, the fundamental structure infrastructure things that we took care of. And really, Bentonville was really growing at a fast rate when when I. Uh, first was elected mayor, the population was around 15,000. And in the 12 years that I was mayor, we doubled in population, but we uh, also grew our square mile area uh, doubled. You know, our population doubled and our square mileage doubled as well. But we took care of our infrastructure, our streets and our water and our sewage and our and Bentonville has its own electric system too one of the few uh, cities in Arkansas and I'm really proud of that and we invested a lot of money in that uh, infrastructure as well and we um, passed a sales tax uh, you know bond issue for that and we passed impact fees uh, so, and we did master plans for every single department and we bought 130 acres for parks and, you know, we did all kinds of, all kinds of fundamental things that were really progressive during those 12 years. So we went from, I mean, the reason I ran was I thought there was going to be a building ban and when in fact our population doubled and so did our square miles and and so did our our budget and I'm really proud of everything we accomplished and oh I had a wonderful staff and I, I had a great um, I had a wonderful chief of police I had a James Allen was uh, my chief of police um, uh, Leon Reese was the fire chief. Britt Vance was our city engineer. Um, Camille Stedman was our city attorney. She was wonderful. Uh, we had a lot of legal issues. We uh, <laughs> we had to go to we ha had to fight a lot of people in court. Uh, we had a lot of issues with our neighboring city, Centerton, at the time. 
we had a lot of legal issues with Carroll Electric at the time uh, of our service areas with electricity. We were in federal court with uh, over water service issues as well. Um, and a lot of those issues were settled. Um, I, I lost my uh, election in 2006. Um, and we were right on the cusp of realizing um, a lot of the growth that you see now. Um, the plans were in place and a lot of wonderful things as you can see in, uh, as a res result of everything we did, uh, you can see the results of the, the things that <laughs> we won in court <laughs> and the plans that we have done were a result of uh, things that took place before then, but we had to fight for things in federal court and uh, plan and, you know, that I'm really proud of. Gary Black was judge part of the time. Gary is my first cousin uh, and we partnered on uh, some county roads and city roads that were um, Price Coffee Road was one of them that we had some partnerships on. Uh, and we, uh, the city of Bentonville partnered with the state as well. And we were one of the first cities in the uh, state that partnered with the state to uh, bump up some, uh, and we were able to get the state to, we were able to get the state to kick us up on the, on their list to do widen some state highways sooner rather than later on their schedule of things to do widen if we would partner with them. The airport was a, was, was a huge thing and um, actually Bentonville supplied the water and the sewer to the airport and there was a lot of controversy. They were trying to get uh, rural water to Western Benton County. And uh, they really couldn't get, um, I mean, Bentonville could supply water immediately, but there was some rub about rural water and Bentonville water. Um, it was a huge controversy. That was huge. Water service territory thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one of the things we had to go to court about. So did you win that and were able to... Yes. <laughs> so how important was that? Uh, well, it was, it was really important. And the city of Bentonville supplied and had supplied the city of Centerton with water for uh, years. Uh, but uh, the city of Centerton wanted to break their water contract with the city of Bentonville and go to rural water. So there was that controversy with the city of Centerton and the airport and rural water and Centerton. And it was a huge, huge conflict. The second term as uh, mayor, I was uh, unopposed. Yeah, so that was nice. <laughs> I like that kind. <laughs> and uh, uh, my last term, I, the first term there were uh, five of us in the race and John Fryer and I w were in a runoff and I prevailed. The second time I was unopposed and the third time uh, Bob McCaslin, who was on the city council, served me on the city council, uh, ran against me and uh, I was defeated by Bob McCaslin. I enjoyed serving. I, I, I loved the job and was proud of uh, my team and what we accomplished, but yeah, it hurt my feelings. I'm not a good loser. <laughs> oh, well, one of my very uh, favorite things was Arkansas Municipal League. Uh, I was very fortunate. The first, uh, the, my first term as mayor, I was appointed to the uh, <clears throat> Arkansas Municipal League uh, board and I was fortunate to serve on there so I met people from all over the state and oh my gosh that was such a wonderful experience and uh, 
As a matter of fact, in 2005, I was uh, fortunate enough to be president of the league. And I, I loved meeting people from all over the state. Some of my dearest friends are uh, mayors from all over the state of Arkansas. Uh, I w wouldn't give that up for anything. And it was wonderful, the opportunity. One thing I can tell you is never take anybody's vote for granted, you know. Even if they have voted for you before and even if you've known them all your life, uh, people expect you to ask them for their vote. And you need to look them in the eye and tell them you appreciate your vote, their vote, and uh, ask them to vote for you again. And if there's anything that they want you to, if, if they need or want you to do for them or expect you to do for them. I mean, people just need to be heard and they need to know that you're listening to them. And I always told my staff, people just need you to hear them. Just listen, you know. The city offices uh, are supposed to be nonpartisan, but you would be surprised how often people would say, are you a Democrat or Republican? You know, and I would say uh, municipal offices are nonpartisan, but they would, they would often say, are you a Democrat or Republican? And I was always shocked by that. And I would insist that, you know, it's, it's nonpartisan, and it should be. Municipal offices should not be partisan. Well, you know, Walmart is, uh, is, is a reason that it's flourished. You know, it, it is uh, the reason that Bentonville has flourished. And uh, Crystal Bridges is amazing. And now Alice Walton is, uh, you know, bringing this medical school here. That's amazing, you know. Uh, and one of the things when I was mayor was uh, uh, the downtown. And it's, <laughs> it's amazing what's happened downtown. You can't find a place to park now. <laughs> and I remember when I was first elected mayor, my daddy said, there are two things, honey, you're never going to fix, and that's dogs and parking. And he was right. <laughs> dogs and parking. That's still an issue, and it's always going to be an issue. But, uh, you know, it's still an issue. It's always going to be an issue. But uh, Walmart has, you know, brought all kinds of people here, but one thing I like better than when I was growing up in this wonderful little Mayberry town that I grew up in, where you didn't have to lock your doors or do anything, uh, and everybody knew everybody, and now I go and see all these wonderful restaurants and all kinds of cuisine that you can get here, which I love, but I don't know anybody when I go to town anymore, but I do love the diversity we have here. So I have, I have the best, of, I've had the best of everything here. Now that I'm a, an adult, I love meeting people from all across the world here, you know. And now we have this wonderful library that we built when I was mayor as well. And it's, and now we're gonna, we're, I'm on the library foundation now, we're expanding it. It's, you know, gonna be double the size it was when we built it in the last year that I was mayor. And there are people from all over the world that I see in that library now, you know. So I've just had the best of both worlds in this little corner of the world. If someone came to you from another part of the country and said, uh, Terry, tell me about Baton County. What's, what's it like? What would you tell them? Well, I would say it used to be the best kept secret, <laughs> but now I think the secret's out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's uh, really, it's a, it's a great place to be.